we are still over um, flight level 180, 18,000 feet. Uh, that is the moment where uh, in the United States airspace we need to set our altimeters, that's the transition altitude. So we're going to check what are the conditions at Kennedy Airport in order to uh, prepare our our landing in the right runway. So if we have a look at the weather, we've got now uh, the wind is, uh, is blowing at 8 knots, uh, component 220. So we are going to once again calculate uh, here we're going to calculate uh, what's the 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 headwind and the crosswind it at our runway. So the standard runway, the most common runway, it's runway one three right for Concord, uh, and that's why in my personal route uh, this is this point is not included in the tutorial, but cathode is the initial approach fix for runway one three right. So I got it prepared, and that's what we're going to check if runway three one zero and wind blowing at blowing from two two zero at eight knots is two two zero at eight right? Okay, so let's check what's the the crosswind and headwind. Now uh, this zero headwind and a crosswind of eight knots, which oops, which is not the best of conditions but it's within Concord limits so we're going to go ahead and prepare our flight for wrong wing uh, 3 1 right uh, we could use real charts but in my case I'm using the software iBlastSoft electronic flight back and then if we go to the approach chart and we select our approach select wrong way 3 1 right and then we select the ILS 31 right and then we select the transition at cathode and then we've got all the information for our airport so uh, we are going to prepare now the um, our uh, our altitude decision height which is 200 feet radial and we are going to start tuning and, and preparing all the different frequencies so we are going to tune Kennedy Airport, which is 115 decimal niner and 200 feet for the decision height. Now the airport elevation is at the touchdown zone is only 12 feet. Uh, we set that already. And uh, the other thing is 115 decimal niner. Okay, we are 84 miles from from the airport now, and we are approaching now flight level 140. So what we're going to do is to level off at 14 uh, 14,000 feet, and because we are um, some miles ahead of of the Owens waypoint, we are going to stay at this altitude and at this altitude speed until we get there. Once we are at Owens, we are going to continue our descent. Now, our planned uh, our planned route was to continue from Owens to Carm, but uh, once we get to 11,000 feet, which was the restriction at Carm, we are going to head direct to the cathode waypoint. Now, um, in in the in this type of INS, we are not able to um, type the name of fixes. So with everything we need to do it by hand. So first thing we, we need to know is which are the coordinates at the cathode waypoint. If you are using flight scene commander, it's very easy. Go to the flight plan and show coordinates. And there we've got it's 40, 32, uh, 3 north. So uh, in, our, in, our, uh, in our card, if you remember, well, uh, we've got here in our flight program uh, what is it is th this one yeah so remember that our INS is programmed uh, this is not London Washington uh, no 
no, sorry, something's wrong. Okay, I'm going to pause and find the because I before I close accidental accidentally I close the the what I'm looking for. So I'm just a small pause and continue in a moment. Okay, yeah. So this is what I'm looking for. Our waypoint one is Owens, our waypoint two is Carmed, and then waypoint three is directly to Kennedy Airport. But now we don't want to go to Kennedy Airport. We want to go to Cadot. So as I said, now here we've got the coordinates, the GPS uh, coordinates. So we go to our navigation and head to number two, because remember number two, sorry, number three, which is Kennedy Airport. And we're going to change the Kennedy, um, we're going to change the, the current coordinates, which are at Kennedy Airport, and choose the cutout waypoint. Once again, I'm, my memory is terrible, so Okay, north 40, 32, 3. 40, 32, 3. And uh, west 73, 32, 1. 73, 32, 1. And I'm going to check to make sure this is right. So 40, 32, 3, 73, 32, 1. And then um, after that, we can go to Kennedy Airport as planned. So that is number four. Uh, shouldn't be necessary because at that point we will be making the um, established, we will be established on the localizer and we will be using radio navs, radio eight. But anyway, it's not a bad idea to, to do so. So I was saying number three is, is cathode and we go now for number four which is uh, 40, 38, 5, 40, 38, 5, and west, 73, 32, 1, 73, 32, 1. I'm going to check, 40, 38, 5, and 73, no, I made a mistake, 73, 47, 1, 73, 47, 1. One. Okay, that is correct. And now we've we also prepared the, um, the different frequencies. We've already got the um, Kennedy VOR, but we need also to tune the frequency for the, well, we've got it here too, for the final runway, uh, which is uh, 111 decimal 5. 111 decimal 5 and the course is 314 yeah the course is 314 and our um, our altitude initial altitude is going to be 3000 feet so uh, 314 All right let's continue we are just now very close, just uh, six, sorry, six nautical miles from Owens. So we can start preparing our continuous descent to 11,000 feet. Now we need to um, continue uh, with idle descent. So remember we've got auto throttle engaged. Uh, I'm going to release the auto throttle and we are going to Start reducing and then click altitude acquire. I've done it a little bit earlier than I should have, so we are losing some speed, but that is not a problem because, anyway, we have to reduce to below um, 250 knots below 10,000 uh, 10, feet, so we need to reduce speed anyway. Okay, so I'm going to make another pause here, and once we level off at um, 1,000 feet, I'll continue explaining uh, what steps we've got missing for the final approach. We are arriving at 250 knots before getting to 11,000 feet, so I'm going to engage now the autopilot, sorry, uh, first the IS hold, so that we keep our, our current speed and we're going to descend quicker, and as before, I activate the auto throttles to keep that speed once we level off. 
Now we want to continue our descent and we need to go now from 11,000 feet to 3,000 feet which is the, the established altitude at the initial of our initial approach fix which is Katot. So I'm going to make a small pause here and we are going to suppose that our ATC controller instead of making going all the way to Karm and make an extra leg and an extra corner which is just uh, going to increase our time and, and fuel consumption we should be more or less around here so let's make a direct to cathode now there are several ways to calculate our descent um, usually maths are pretty simple but um, you can get a very rough and quick um, estimates using this descent plant by aerotexas.com this plant uh, there's also an application for, for Windows and, and pads and, well, it's in several formats, but we are using the online calculator here. Our distance to cathode, um, I want to change, remember it's waypoint number 3. So our distance to cathode is 47 nautical miles. We are at 11,000 feet on, on indicated airspeed. Usually the reference is the ground speed, but the difference with this calculator is that we can use the indicated airspeed, which is um, most of the time uh, is easier to get than the ground, because the ground speed is going to change um, more often. So initial altitude 11,000 feet, indicated speed 250 knot, um, target altitude 3,000 feet, and this thing to go is uh, 47 nautical miles. Let's round up to 45. And that gives us a rate of descent of 900 feet per minute. Um, because the default altitude acquired is about 800, we're going to set that as default and we should get pretty close to our desired results. So what I'm going to do now is we are at 11,000 feet and we're going to change from our current waypoint to waypoint number 3. And we're going to select 3,000 feet and I'm going to keep, in this time, I'm going to keep the auto throttles on at IS hold because it, remember that if I select the IS hold and the rate of descent is going to depend okay one moment now altitude acquire because if i select the, um, the this setting here and that is going to be uh, dependent on the throttle position so at idle we would get um, much closer once uh, there are two options two possibilities one if we keep our rate of descent our airspeed will go down and if we keep our airspeed, of course, we will uh, the rate of descent will increase, and we will arrive our waypoint much earlier than than needed than required. So with the auto throttles, we keep the speed, and um, we'll just level off at 3,000 feet. So we are arriving 10,000 feet, and now it's also a moment uh, to start checking the approach checklist. The first is the cabin crew alert, 15 minutes to go, um, it's more or less approximately, it's not very accurate, but anyway. Next step, we uh, switch on the taxi turn lines below 10,000 feet, which we are pr practically is almost there. Uh, next, the radio and navigation switches, uh, right now we need the INS, we will switch to radio later on. Uh, seat, uh, seat belts signs on the engine control schedule in the approach mode oops control shift number two and then we go to the approach mode right click uh, cross bleed uh, sorry here brake fans and cross bleed valves they should be both of them off and shut because we haven't changed anything during flight so shift number two, brake controls, they are off. And now shift number two, the air conditioner panel and the cross bead are shut. Now this is an interesting setting, the SSB, because um, that depends uh, if we want to make a land three, a, a category land three landing, 
we need to make two unusual changes, two strange changes, one in the, well, the two of them in the electrical panels, one in the AC electrical panel and the other one in the battery electrical panel. Uh, control shift number seven. Now, this switch over here, we've got to right click and split the system, the split system breaker. We have to activate it and now right click, sorry, the shift uh, control eight and in the battery selection, we need to left click and also set it to the split battery. So we could, uh, that way we can perform the, the, um, the land, a, a land three category landing. Now we need to check the fuel and center of gravity, 13 tons and the center of gravity is within limits, no problem. Uh, we need to check the speed bugs, but remember that we already set them before, so they should be in the right position. And next, visor in nose, we've got to put them down 5 degrees. And as before, noise in the cabin increases. Now the altimeters and radio altimeters are set. Uh, the radio altimeters, remember 200 uh, feet and the altimeters, let's check ah, I didn't check in the when I passed the transition altitude I think I forgot to set the altimeter, we checked the wind, yes we checked the winds but didn't check the altimeters 2 niner niner 7 there we go 26 miles to cathode and that's the approach landing checklist now, uh, while we are still going down, let's just comment very briefly several things. Well, first that is that the auto land 2 and land 3 has different requ uh, requirements. We need at least one autopilot engaging land and one auto throttle enga engaging altitude acquire, uh, sorry, in uh, indicated speed acquire. Now, for land 3, there are more requirements apart from the two autopilots. We need uh, a one auto throttle at least in the indicated that I speed acquired the same. We need the, the two uh, air data computers uh, working, N not one, but the two of them. At least one flight director, the INS3, the one for the uh, virtual flight engineer on, and we need to check that all the green pressure and all the green yellow and uh, hydraulic, all the hydraulic system are working properly. Then we need to uh, tune both frequencies, uh, the ILS in the same frequency. Just before I forget, uh, have a look at the hydraulic panel. Now the yellow uh, hydraulic system is unpressurized because during flight with landing gear up we don't have any pressure. One of the steps we are going to check later on is that we have some pressure. Now uh, we are rating very slowly so I'm going to increase our rate of descent uh, just a little bit just to make sure we are not too high when getting to cathode. Uh, right, now let's uh, plan what we're going to do. Remember our reference speeds. So uh, when we started our um, localized air capture maneuver, we need to reduce from 250 knots to 210 knots. Then we establish on the localizer at 190 knots to start the, to start the descent and then at, uh, we start to level off at 40, uh, 40 feet above the ground and then at 15 feet above, the, um, above the, the runway we just close our throttles and let them at idle. Uh, the, there were two separate reverse uh, during the real um, procedure at 100 knots, two outer reverse and idle and then at 75 knots the inner reverse idle and then at 40 knots cancel reverse uh, because in my throttles there's only one position for for reverse we will be using the full auto throttle uh, reverse so let's see how we, we're going we are 14 nautical miles from from the cathode waypoint so what i'm going to do is make another pause here and finish this video and then make another video just for the final approach landing and the last checklist so see you in just a couple of minutes.